Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Matthias Nikolai vs. Alex Perez full card breakdown. I just works crazy this week today, so I gotta get, I'm still trying to get you guys some videos out. So we don't have fights. We have a week off, so I'm going to have this video on the, the couple other videos. In order for me to really do that, I got to make a one video for a full fight card, and then I can make a couple other videos instead of doing 13 individual ones. Again, if you guys want more of these, please like, subscribe, comment, share them. The reason why I typically do individual ones, those just get more views. It doesn't hurt the channel if I do more because I'll get more views on those individual videos videos on single ones typically in the past they haven't gotten a whole lot of views so that's why i typically do individual ones because it makes up for the time that i put into it and all those things for me to uh do that so yeah i hope that made sense there but as always uh let's get started we got 13 fights uh ufc 300 was last night so and i went to work afterwards for about five hours so if i seemed a little drained that's why I'm sorry. Doing my very, very best. Um, you guys are incredible. I almost at 2,000 subscribers. Um, as my, as of my thoughts for UFC 300, that'll be a separate video after this video. And you probably won't see this one until tomorrow, about six o'clock at night. So I'm recording this on Sunday. You'll see this probably tomorrow. Like I said, at six. Anyways, so first we start the we start the card off with uh, Maha Shot Height. Hi, Hayazar, Hayazar, Mayashat versus Gabriel Benitez. Uh, both these guys, the, both of these fighters, not great fighters. Um, uh, Benitez has more fights in the UFC. He's, he has 14 fights. This is his 15th. He's 50-50. I mean, that's that's the reality. He's 7-7 seven and seven in the UFC. Um, he's been finished five times. Se uh, five of those seven losses are by finish. Um, now, he, he has uh, five finishes in the UFC as well. Um, he's been finished four times, or like I said, five times, but by TKO or KO four times. He has three TKO or KO wins in the UFC. So it's kind, he's only been a decision four times out of the 14. So that's 10 finishes, win or lose. So you kind of look at it and it, it's, it's interesting to me because he comes into the UFC and he fights Humberto Brown Morrison. Not great. Beats him, guillotine. Fights Clay uh, Collard, who didn't really find his stride. Not a UFC caliber fighter, but a fun fighter for sure. And then gets absolutely destroyed by Andre Feely. And this was nine years ago. Um, and then fights Sam Cecilia, who's a power guy, who's a, a power striker. You know, not a lot of technique, but big, big power. Uh, beats him by guillotine choke. And the theme you're seeing, like Andre Feely, young Andre Feely, loses to him, 14-3 and three at the time. Um, but again, he's kind of beating these guys that are in this like almost like no man's land in their careers, like Clay, Clay Cowlard, coming off the loss, I think, against Max Holloway, where he was finished, TKO on the ground. Fun fight, though. Um, he's, fight, he's beating these guys that aren't great fighters. Loses to Feely. Who's a decent fighter for sure, especially now. Uh, more, uh, like more. Um, what's it called? Solidified, I guess you could say. And then loses to Enrique Barzola by decision. Which, all right, twelve and three at the time, twenty-seven and two now. So pretty dang good. Beats Jason Knight, shocker. Beats Humberto uh, Bendene, Bendene, Bendene. Jesus, what a name. Uh, finishes him, gets caught in an armbar, slams him, KOs him. Then fights Sadiq Yusuf. And I remember watch. I remember watching that fight, and Sadiq Yusuf just faster, more power, and the style that uh, uh, ben, uh, Gabriel Benitez had in his last few fights, it didn't work. It didn't work. Now, if you look at it, up until the Sadiq Yusuf fight, he was what two, three. You know, five and two in the UFC, so he's two and five in his last nine, uh, yeah, last seven fights in the UFC. So, as he steps up to this higher competition, doesn't look great. Now he loses to Omar Morales, which his best showing to me was the Chris Duncan fight, and he was a little bit older then. I think he's been cut since he lost that fight by split. Omar Morales looked 
awesome in that first half of that fight. He looked damn good. Loses to Omar Morales, who's 9-0. Good kickboxer. You know, kickboxer, as they say. And then fights Justin James, who was coming off of the uh, two finishes, I believe. Or, no. Um, he came off of the... Uh, oh, what's that? Oh, Frank Camacho knockout. Finishing him real quick. Let's see. Yep. Came off the Frank Camacho knockout. And then lost to Gavin Tucker after hurting Gavin Tucker, I believe, early in that matchup. And then Gabriel Benitez. And he's been on the decline since then. Um, then he fights. Uh, he beats Justin James knee to the body, which was a nasty knee. It was it was very nice. He loses to Billy Q, who, all right. And then loses to uh, David Onama. And his last win was Charlie Antaveros, who is just not good. Just not good. Did lose to Jim Miller, rear naked choke, face crank. He had moments in that fight. Um, you know, Jim Miller was getting caught with his straight punches. So, the theme is experience, power, and speed beats him. So, Mahashan has had a big issue. Like, when he fought uh, Borachev, Slava Claus, he's had an issue where the first time he was, he was finished in his career, he gets destroyed by Slava Claus. Loses to Rafa Garcia, but Rafa's a good grappler, all those things. He loses to him. Now, this is a guy that flatlined Steve Garcia. Now, Steve Garcia did uh, kind of charge in, you know, uh, was a little bit of reckless aggression, you know, so he gets caught. We know how good Steve Garcia is. That win ages awesome. How does he do in a rematch if that would ever come about, which I don't think it would? Probably not great, but he does have a win over him. So you have to take it with what happened. And losing to Garcia, experience, you know, Garcia does, and a good wrestling background. Borchev, just a great, great striker. So the thing that I, I, I'm really intrigued to see what happens in this one, I think Gabriel Benitez is just a little bit more well-rounded. I think uh, uh, Mahashat has the, the power to hurt Benitez if he's not defensively sound like if he's rushing in now he has been caught rushing in before with Sadiq Yusuf he was caught you know so uh Gabriel Benitez or not Gabriel Benitez that's what I'm talking about uh David Onama was able to hurt him now he did hurt David Onama um with a punch to the eyeball um but again I like Gabriel Benitez in this one I think his well-rounded his he does have dog in him unless you have that good Big power striking. And I know Mahashat has power. But I don't think if you can overwhelm him, he can come back and win. I think early, it's going to be up to Gabriel Benitez to to break him down a little bit. Leg kicks, absorb the punishment that's going to come because it's going to. But you have to think. This is a guy that technically could have been cut at any point. He's 2-5 and five in his last seven. Let's be real. So, with that being said, and again, against Jim Miller, he was having moments in that fight. He was he was having moments against a guy who was a absolute veteran. So, with Mahashat, I, I think Gabriel Benitez is just, like I said, more well-rounded, has more experience, obviously more fights, understanding that the first round is going to be tough. But as that fight progresses... Gabriel Benitez will be able to break him down and get a in a get a win. Possibly a TKO win at the end of the third round, but probably Gabriel Benitez by decision. Unless Benitez is able to uh get the fight in real close real early and make it a dog fight, make it a scrap, and maybe he catches him early. But I personally think it's a either round three finish or a decision uh for Gabriel but Gabriel Benitez. And then next we have, uh, I'm pretty sure I changed it for some freaking reason. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm right here. And then next we have, da-da-da-da, da 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 let us see. Next we have Ivana Petro Petrovic versus Nia Liang. Nia Liang, her record is 19-7. and seven. She came in the UFC at... 19 and 3. She's looked so bad in the UFC. Like Ariana Carnales Car Car Losi finished her. Uh, uh, Silvia Gomez Jerez finished her, destroyed her. And then she lost to JJ Aldrich, ground and pound, which again, not good. Now, Ivan up 
uh, Petrovic lost to uh, Luana Carolina, which is not a good look. Nan Liang is only 27 years old. She's been out for about seven months. It'll be about eight months by the time they fight. It is the 24th, I believe, when they fight. Something like that. Um, plus 350 underdog for Naya, Naya, Na Liang. So, again, the interesting thing with this one is Petrovic, 6-1, and 4-1 and one in her last five fights. Minus 450 favorite. 29 years old, 5'8", with a 70.9 inch reach. Fighting Na Liang, who's 19 and 7, 2 and 3 in her last five fights. Uh, finishes all in her last three fights. It's been bad. bad. Plus 350 underdog, 27, crazy. Years old, 5'5", five, five with a 67.3 inch reach. What is that? A 3.6 inch reach advantage for Petrovic. So if you look at it, Petrovic, her most uh, experienced fighter that she's fought is Luana Carolina. And Luana Carolina isn't good. She's not good. She's just not. We have to, I mean, come on. I don't think there's much argument there. Now, she does have five finishes out of her six, or her uh, <clears throat> seven fights. Her six wins, five finishes. So, there's that. That's cool. But the thing, even though Liang is losing, this is a toss-up. This is... You're 19 and 7. You were 19 and 3 when we came in. You've had success outside of the cage. Here's a a person, a green, somebody who's green, somebody who's a white belt in fighting. Can you beat her? Because again, you look at it, you know, her losses, Ariana Carnalesi, 12 and 2. Uh, Jerez, 10 and 4. JJ Aldrich, 11 and 6. Again, something else if you look at it. You know, nine and five in the UFC for JJ Aldridge. So, uh, Silvana Gomez Jerez, she's one and three in the UFC, but she has four fights. You know, four fights. So, and she hurt uh, uh, Vanessa Dimopoulos with a big right hand, the same right hand she hurt Liang. And then arguably beat Karolina Kovalkiewicz. And then Arna, Arna, Ariana Carnalesi, Jesus, 14 and three. Like I said, she's two and two in the UFC, four fights. In the UFC. So a lot of experience in the UFC. Now, again, the, she's just fought better competition. I mean, she has a lot more fights, as we said, 26 total fights, and she's just fought the better competition. This is where are you at for the UFC? You've lost to these girls that have experience in the UFC. You've lost to them, but you've also, actually, and if you look at it, her record outside of the UFC, like, Again, nineteen and three, but she has wins over six and one, three and four, zero oh and two, four and two, two and two, two and zero. Oh. You know, she's lost to five and zero, oh, three and three and zero. Oh. Her best win is ten and four against Julian Julia Berezikova, Berezikova, who's ten and five now. Oh, this is the girl that fought. What's her freaking name? She hasn't fought in a long time, but yeah, not not great. Not great. That record's a little weird. But again, she still fought the better of competition. Now, how have those fights gone? Five and zero. The girl she lost against to armbar second round. Ma uh, Maria Agapava uh, finished in the first round. Jan finished at the, late in the second round. Ariana second round, first round, second round. So she's not great. But again, she has eleven submission wins, six. Uh, TKO or KO wins. Hasn't finished six six times out of seven losses. 17 finishes. Only been to decision. She has two disqualification wins. Which, again, is wild. You never see that. So, sure. Oh, strikes to the back of the head. Back, back, foe the head. What? That's odd. Anywho's. Yeah, I, I think Liang in this one, she's not great. Plus 350 uh, underdog. She's not great, but this is a test. This is a, this is where are you at? And it's also a test for Petrovic because she didn't look good against a girl like Luana Carolina, who's also not good. So it's a test for both girls. Where are you at? Can you be this girl whose record is padded as all hell and has experience in the UFCs, fought good competition? Or uh liang can you beat a girl who has virtually no experience lost her ufc debut against a girl who's also not great how can what can you do this is your chance i think petrovic gets it done i just think she's uh, she's 
a little bit better. This fight's not going to be great. But I have Ivana Petrovic to win this matchup. And then next we have, uh, again, it's a decent card. Some fun fights on this card. And then next we have James uh, Lion Top versus Gabe Green. Gabe Green coming off that devastating knockout loss to uh, Brian Battle, um, which wasn't great. Known for his durability, kind of just ran into a right hook on uh, uh, Brian Battle. He just forced the action when he didn't really need to. I understand crowd him, but don't be reckless. And that's what he was. He was reckless. James Lion Top, Goku, 14 and 2, minus 135 favorite. 24 years old, six foot tall with a 73 inch reach. Now it has been almost a year. It'll be about a year by the time he fights or give or take, you know, about a year, 11 and five, two and three in his last five fights, plus 115, basically a pick them right there. 30 years old, 5'10 with a 73 inch reach, you know, for, uh, well, one inch high or two inch in height for James Liontop. So the thing I always like to do is Gabe Green has the experience in the UFC. So, you look at his eight finishes out of his 14 wins. One win on the contender series, which he did get a decision. So he's fought some pretty decent competition. A guy that was 19 and 6, 20 and 9, 20 and 11, uh, 12 and 7, 8 and 2. He lost against a guy that was 3 and 0, and then 2 and 0 when he was early in his career back in 2019. But So he's been on a good fight win streak, 12 fights in a row. The thing I don't necessarily know on how his cardio is going to be. He has three TKO TKO wins in the first round, two in the second, and two in the third. Cut does have six decisions, but again, it's different when you're fighting in the UFC. So against a guy like Gabe Green, who has experience, he's two and three in his five outings in the UFC. He has uh, ten fin- ten finishes in his career. Has been TKO three times. I don't understand what they were. Okay, he has been finished before. They were talking about his durability like it was something wild in in uh, the the breakdown of uh, Gabe Green when he fought Brian Battle. I don't understand that. Then uh, Jalen Turner finished him. Rondo Abofo uh, finished him. I'm I'm very confused on that to be honest. Oh, he only came back. He came back two months. Two months later, and got knocked out again. Wild. Yuck. Um, like I said, fought Daniel Rodriguez, who was 11-1 at the time. Uh, beat Phil Rowe. Beat Yuan uh, Lanessi, who's terrible. Terrible. Fought Ian, Ian Machado, Gary. Uh, just couldn't couldn't get a hold of him. Couldn't close the distance at all. And Brian Battle flatlined him 14 seconds. You know, took a little bit of time off. Almost a year, which I really, really like. I, j- I just think James Liontop has that finishing ability and he has that debut you know uh, coming in for his debut the issue is his debutants haven't done very well i think lion top could do well early but i don't know how he's gonna do late in this matchup if he can get there gabe green has been finished like i said three times once in the ufc at 14 seconds he took a year off typically pretty damn durable guy um again has the experience that's the reality in it uh, Gabe Green has the experience. I'm going Gabe Green. I think he wins by a decision or a late finish. I think James Liontop will get off to a good start and then probably gas out a little bit as the fight goes. And then next we have, let's see, Caitlin Souza versus Marnik Mann. Interesting. Caitlin Souza, who's 13 and 4, minus 340 favorite, 28 years old, 5'3 with a 63 inch reach. Fighting Marnik Mann, who's six and two, three and two in her last fights, last five fights, got destroyed by Bruno Brazil head kick a year and a half ago over, and then beat Amber Brown by armbar seven and six. Okay, and then lost to Jaffine uh, Nutson by decision six min- six months ago, plus two sixty five underdog. Thirty one years old, five foot. Alexa off five foot tall with a 64 inch reach one inch reach advantage for man and a three inch height advantage for Souza. Souza lost her last one against Kareen Silva knee bar, which yikes 10 months ago. Not great. Both lost their UFC debuts. I just Souza's interesting because she has 13 wins, nine wins by finish. She has four TKO wins in the first round. Uh, Owen one, like I said, in the UFC getting submitted. 
uh, by Kareen Silva, who is a monster. Really fun fighter there. Marnik Mann, again, just kind of green. Eight, win eight total fights, four finishes out of her six wins. You know, she has two finishes in the first round. But again, how did she get it done with a girl like uh, uh, Kate, uh, Caitlin Souza? I don't know. I think Souza gets it done. I think she gets the win. And then we go back again. Let's keep on going. Dantel Mays versus uh, Kyle Machado. This is interesting, again, because of the styles. Dantel Mays likes to pick his shots, stay on the outside. Has two losses against Rodrigo Nascimento, who's, again, not good. Um, it, it does have some power, but he's, he hesitates to pull the trigger. And I think that's what happens here again. Unless Machado just ends up getting caught with something big. I don't see Dante Mays winning this. I think the pressure, the output, and the willingness to engage by Kai Machado gets the job done. Uh, Dante Mays is 10-6, 2-2-0-1 two, two, oh, in his last five fights. Minus 160 favorite. 32 uh, years old. He has a no contest against Hamdi. I'm de he tested positive. Hamdi did. 32 years old, 6'6", six, six with an 81-inch reach. Kai Machado's 8-2-1, and 4-1 and one in his last five fights. Losing his last one against Mick Parkin. Parkin. Fun fight. Fun fight. Four months ago. 29 years old, 6'4", with a 78-inch reach. Two inches in height for Mays. Three-inch reach for Mays as well. I just think Kai Machado gets the job done. Pressure, output, pace. I think he just overwhelms him. Six finishes uh, in his eight wins. Four in the, in the first round. All four of his finishes are in the first round. Six first round finishes. Now, again, you look at downtown Mays. He's fought some good guys. He Now, has he done great with it? No. Um, now, his losses, he has a one TKO in the third round. Cool. One sub in the second and one sub in the third. So, typically stays pretty safe in that first round. Only has two finishes in the first round as wins-wise. Um, so I would suspect, suspect this is going to be a long fight. You know, Machado isn't a guy that's been finished. He's gone to a decision. I would suspect if there's a finish, it's from Kai Machado or a decision. I like Kai Machado in this one. I think he gets the job done. I like him a lot in this matchup. And then you go over to Austin Hubbard versus Michael Figlat. Uh, Michael Figlot lost to Faraz Zion. He looked real bad in that matchup. Austin Hubbard, 15-7, and 3-2 and two in his last five fights. 2-2 uh, two and two in his last four. 32 years old. 5-10 uh, with a 71-inch reach. Michael Figlot, 8-1, and 4-1 and one in his last five fights. 27. Crazy. 5-10 with a 70-inch reach. 1-inch reach advantage for Hubbard. So I think the more well-rounded fighter here is Austin Hubbard. The one issue I have with Hubbard is... Is just his IQ sometimes. You know, he's never been TKO'd, um, but he, he has four wins by TKO. He has one finish in the fifth, so we know his cardio is going to be pretty good. Two in the second, and then one in the first. He only has two finishes in the first round, uh, TKO or submission. Has uh, three in the second, and then one in the third. And like I said, he has that fifth round finish as well. Has been subbed once in the first and then two times in the second round, submission-wise. Um, he's been submitted three times, coming off the loss against Kurt Hullabau. Submission, triangle choke in the second round. Kind of getting lit up in that in that fight against him, um, um, Kurt Hullabau. Now, again, he was submitted in the first round by Joe Selecki. Joe Selecki, good grappler, as we have seen before. Did lose his last one against, um, what's his name, Jakar Close. Uh, lost to Mark Madsen, Davey Ramos, Eric Wisely, uh, DC Grapplers, Sean McC McC McMurray uh, submitted him a long time ago as well. So again, Austin Hubbard, a lot of experience. He's been around a long time, He even though he, he did leave. Went to, he beat Julian Lane, Agnew, he beat some dude to Agnew, Aaron McKenzie, Roosevelt Roberts, beat him by split, and then lost to uh, Kurt Hullabaugh on the Ultimate Fighter 31 finale. Or was that, no, it was the... No, it was the 292 Sterling O'Malley. I'm pretty sure that was the finale. Pretty sure. Where is it? Yes, tournament championship. Yep, it was the finale of uh, Ultimate Fighter 31. So, again, I think Hubbard is a little bit more well-rounded. A little bit more well-rounded. Again, the issue is, is his IQ. He's never been finished um, uh, by TKO. 
Fig Lie has four finishes, um, three in the second, and then one in the third. Has has been to decision four times, as I said. Lost to Fry Siam, who is a decent striker who has had some who has some power. Kind of beat Figla at his own game. Hurt him real bad multiple times in that matchup. I just think Austin Hubbard is a little bit more well-rounded, like I said. And he uses his grappling, his takedowns, uh, to stay in close and squeak out a victory. Probably a split decision. It's going to be a close one. But I think Austin Hubbard gets the job done. And then next we have Ronnie Yaya versus Victor Henry. Very, very fun matchup here. You know, Ronnie Yaya coming off of that disgusting knockout loss against Montel Jackson. Took a lot of time off. It'll be about a year when we when this fight happens. He's 2-2-0-1. Two, two, oh, uh, or 2-2-1, two, two, I'm sorry. Uh, had a draw against Barzola. Who, okay, so 28 wins, 11 losses, 1 draw, plus 440 for Ronnie Yaya. 39 years old, 5'6", with a 68-inch reach. Fighting Victor Henry, who's 23-6, and 2-1-0-1. Oh, no contest against Javid Bacharet. Uh, minus a 650 favorite for Victor Henry, 36 years old, 5'7", with a 68-inch reach. 1 inch in height for Victor Henry. I just don't see a way that Ronnie Yaya or Hani Yaya gets a submission win. I, I just don't see it. You know... Victor Henry's been a guy that's not been submitted before in his career. Has some finishes as well. 14, yeah, 14 finishes, 6 by TKO, 8 by submission. Now, you know, he has 5 finishes in the first. He has 5 finishes in the second. Uh, uh, 3 finishes in the in the uh, uh, third round. Decisions, obviously. Um, he's lost three by, or he, he's won three by split or majority. He's lost two by split or majority. So four unanimous decision losses. He's two one and one in the UFC. Two one zero oh, and one. No time, con no contest right there. So again, he's able to dog it out. Now the Rafael Sunsau one is interesting because he was able to keep the fight in close. He's able to do do what a Sunsau is able to do. Ronnie Yaya is a good jiu-jitsu fighter. The issue is he's not really been able to adapt. Now, of course, he has. My point is he puts himself in bad positions, especially when fighters have big power. Victor Henry doesn't necessarily have that big power. Does he have finishes? Yes. Is he, does he have good movement and output and all these things? Yes. But again, he also is a guy that like Brian Ronnie Barcelos, he kept the fight uh, standing, good takedown defense, Alba Marias, you know, same thing. Rafael Sunsau is the one matchup who is a good grappler that was able to fight the way that Sunsau fights. Is Yanni Yaya going to be able to do that? Because he doesn't have a great takedown. Ronnie Yaya doesn't. So... I'm I'm curious to know on how Yaya gets close without getting you know uh punched in the face really the thing that makes me pick ronnie yaya in this is Tra uh, victor henry i almost said travis henry but victor henry doesn't have that power to hurt yaya to make him take bad shots to make him do these things he might be okay with pushing that action getting in there getting in there close that distance because there's nothing really coming back that that, that can really hurt him now, does the takedown defense of Victor Henry show up? Probably, but I think it's the scrambles, it's the adjustments, it's Ronnie Yaya's ability to find ways to get it, get these fights to positions he wants it. And I, again, the biggest X factor in this is Henry doesn't have the power to make him pay when he's in these bad positions. So I have Ronnie Yaya getting this win. Probably a split. Gotta be honest, it's probably a split decision. But as always, that one is going to be really, really fun. So next, we have Tim Means versus Euros Medic. This fight is awesome. Now, Tim Means, as he's gotten a little bit older, he is 40 years old now. As he's gotten a little bit older, he's tried to mix in everything, all of his skills. Not just be that one-dimensional striker. Now, he's at his best when he's able to close the distance uh, uh, throw combinations to the body, to the head, uses elbows, 
mix in his wrestling, at least the threat of it. He's lost some close split decisions against guys like a Bilal. Again, he took that on short notice. And then there was someone else he had lost a uh, close split decision. Oh, um, what's his name? He's out of the UFC now. Oh, um, Court McGee beat him. Uh, what's his name? Sergio Moraes. Court McGee did not beat him. That's not who I was thinking of. But lost to Sergio Moraes, you know, as well. Anyways, doesn't matter. Uh, 33 wins, 15 losses, and one draw. Two and three in his last five fights. He was doing work against Alex Morono and uh, got caught with the guillotine. He was doing well against Max Griffin. Lost a split decision. Loses that one. It was fought uh, Kevin Holland. Just kind of outstruck manpower in that one. Kevin Holland had a big, big power as we've seen. He, we know he has power. But he was able to hurt uh, Tim, uh, Tim Means and catch him on Darce. Plus 195 underdog, like I said, 40 years old. 6'2 with a 75-inch reach. Euros Medich, who's 9-2, 3-2 in his last five fights. Lost his last one against Orobai, but it is should be known he was supposed to fight Johnny Parsons, who is a kickboxer. Minus 235 favorite, 31 years old just a few days ago. Six foot tall with a 71 inch reach, reach four inch for Tim Means coming off of the Andre Filio finish. Tim Means may retire after this if it doesn't go his way. So I like Tim Means. I love the fact uh, when he fights, when he's on, he's super fun. Even at 40 years old, at 39 years old, 38 years old, even in these losses, his fights are so fun to watch. You know, his last win, he got a, he beat Andre Filio, yes, but before that was uh, about three years ago, almost. Beat Nicholas Dalby. Hurt in the third round. Looked real good in the first and the second. Won that decision. Um, I just think Euros Medic. He's had issues of pulling the trigger. Like when he fought uh, uh, Matthew Summersberger. Kept getting hurt. And then was able to adapt and find the chin. And I think Medic, as this fight goes, fighting a guy like Dirty Bird. Who's going to... Uh, make it a scrap and maybe want to keep the fight in close. I think he's able to use his his skills, his power, his sneaky power that he does have to his advantage. And I think Medic gets the job done. I'm, I'm rooting for Tim Means. I'm going for him. I'll be hoping he wins. But I just think Medic at, tw- at 31 years old just gets the job done. So I, I like Medic a lot in that fight. Unfortunately, I want Tim Means though. And then next we have... Jonathan Pierce versus David Onama. This is an interesting fight. Jonathan Pierce, 14 and 5, 4 and 1, his last five fights, losing to Joe Anderson Brito, who he was having success against. Just got caught with a uh, modified guillotine, Ninja Toke is what they call it. 31 years old, 6 foot tall, with a 71 inch reach. Fighting David Onama. Wild. 11 and 2, 3 and 2 in his last five fights. One loss is against Mason Jones. Took it on short notice. Since then, he lost to uh, Nate Landwehr, where he had Nate Landwehr all sorts of finished. Gassed out in that fight, was able to survive himself. I don't know how that was possible, and ended up going to a decision, which was wild. Um, and then uh, destroyed Gabriel Santos' uppercut, which again, very surprised, froze him with the uppercut. It was crazy. Uh, Santos looked real good in his debut. Um, 29 years old, 5'11", with a 74-inch reach, 3-inch reach advantage for Onama, height in Pierce's favor. The biggest thing for me in this one is, can Jonathan Pierce make this a wrestling fight, a wrestling match? Can he stay in that space? He does do good uh, in exchanges, but he also does get caught, and he does tend to wear that a little bit. Now, you know, when he fought... um, uh, 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 Oh, what's his name? He just beat he beat uh, Cameron Sam- Simon. He beat Isaac Dolgarian. I can't think of his freaking name. Uh, let's see, Christian Rodriguez. Yeah, Christian Rodriguez. He got caught a lot in that third round. Um, and Onama is a guy that, if, as long as he's taking his time, he's picking his shots, he's gonna do well. The problem is, I think Jonathan Pierce's style of grappling, standing close, wrestling, all of these things. I just think Jonathan Pierce makes that difficult for Onama to do. Now, do I think Onama gets shut out? No, because he is a good striker. But I don't necessarily know if the cardio with the striking, because he's going to get desperate with that striking, is going to help him in favor him. Uh, fighting a guy like Pierce, who's going to keep it close. He's going to be looking to get back on track after being set back by Joe Anderson Brito, who is a great fighter, honestly. So 
David Onama, sneaky, sneaky possibility of getting a finish on this one because of his power. But I think Jonathan Pierce gets the decision win. Next, we have um, jo- Joante Dinez versus Austin Lane. Austin Lane, very chinny. Not great. Lost to Greg Hardy. Lost to Justin Taffa. Got destroyed. Plus 200 underdog. 36 years old. Was in the NFL. Six foot six with an 80 inch reach. Jonte Dinez, 6 0, 32 years old. Six foot four with a 79.5 inch reach. Half inch reach advantage for Austin Lane. The biggest thing for me in this one is it's not going the distance. Austin Lane is fast, but keeps his chin right up in the air and he probably gets finished. Not much to talk about. You know, he has six finishes in the first round, so he's going to come right at Austin Lane. Austin Lane, again, has more experience. Yes, he's 12-4-0-1. Yeah, cool. Awesome. His chin's not good, though. He's been finished four times in the first round. Now, he also has eight TKO wins in the first round. Cool, good. But again, you know, uh, Greg Hardy destroyed him. Frank Tate, who's not good, destroyed him. Vernon Lewis, who's not good, destroyed him. You know, Justin Taffa flatlined him. Beautiful, beautiful right hand by Justin Taffa after the eye poke he suffered. You know, um, again, this fight's not going to decision. It's going to end one way or not. And I think Dinez gets the job done. The next, we're getting close to the top on here. Kareem Silva versus Ariana Lipsky. Ariana Lipsky has looked awesome in her last three fights, destroying Casey O'Neill by armbar. But before that, she hurt her real bad in that fight. Uh, 17 and 8, 4 and 1 her last five fights. That one loss is against Priscilla Kacheria, TKO or KO, a little over almost two years ago at this point. Three wins in a row. She's a slight favorite at minus 140. 30 years old, 5'6 with a 67 inch reach. Kings MMA, she is where she trains at. Queen of Violence. Kareen Silva, 17 and 4, plus 115, basically a pick em for her. 30 years old, 5'5 five, five, with a 67 inch reach. One, height in, uh, one inch in height for Lipsky. I like Kareem Silva a lot. 17 and 4. This is her 22nd professional fight. Eight wins in a row. She has eight, six TKO wins in the first round. Seven in the first round. She has 13 finishes in the first round. She's been finished in the third, and she's been subbed in the, twice in the first. So she did lose a unanimous decision, but that's besides the point. Been finished three out of four times. Again, the third round and two subs in the second round. Lipsky is not a really a submission girl. Now, can she hurt her and arm bar her like she did with uh, uh, Casey O'Neill? Sure. But I don't think Kareem Silva is lesser than Casey O'Neill. I don't think she's on the level of Casey O'Neill. I think she's better than Casey O'Neill. And being the jiu-jitsu girl that she is, uh, I would suspect that those, yeah, she lost her, uh, against Marina in 2017 and was submitted again before that in 2014 against a girl that she'd beaten recently. Got her revenge on that one. Actually, guillotine choked her at the end of the first round. So, again, I like Kareem Silva. I just think she has more weapons. She is going to have to be careful and keep the fight real close against Lipsky because her striking looked real nice in her last couple of fights. I like Kareem Silva. I think she gets the job done probably by decision but also could get a late, late finish. So I have Kareem Silva winning that matchup. And then we go on to the co-main event, which is the wild co-main event. Ryan Spann versus Bogdan Guskov, who's coming off a win against Zach Pawanga, who, again, is not great. I like Zach. I liked him a lot on the Ultimate Fighter. He's not really panned out. But Ryan Spann, 21 wins, 9 losses, 2 in 3 in his last 5 fights. Remember, if he wins, I, I, I trained. I, I, just, I just trained. I put all my shit into it. I trained. Uh, minus 175, if you know, you know. 32 years old. 6'5", with an 81 and a half inch reach. Fighting uh, Bogdan Guskov. 15 and 3, 4 and 1, his last five fights. Had moments against Vog- uh, Volkan Ozdemir as well. Just that cardio said, see ya. One f- plus 145 underdog, 31 years old. 6'3", with a 76 inch reach. 5 and a half inch reach advantage for Ryan Spann. 2 inches in height for Spann as well. The deciding factor in this one is it is not going the distance. Ryan Spann, goodness. Three TKO losses in the first round. Six wins by TKO in the first round. Has 10 submissions in the first round as well. 
but has also been subbed twice. So he's been finished five times in the first round, but he's also had 16 finishes in the first round. That is wild. He does have a couple, two in the second, or one in the second round, one in the third round. He's been submitted once in the second, never been TKO'd past the first round, but has two losses by split or majority decision. This fight's going to be crazy. It's not going all three rounds. I can goddamn guarantee that. But Bogdan, losing to Anthony Smith and Krylov in his last two fights, terrible fight against Anthony Smith, had it. Had the fight. Yuck. Um, 13 finishes. He has 10 first round finishes. Now, uh, or sorry, he has 11 first round finishes. So, you know, he has 11. Ryan Spann has 16 first round finishes. Six by a TKO or KO, 10 by submission. I don't necessarily know if I trust the chin of Ryan Spann. He's seven and four. But early, I like it a lot. The problem is, I think Guskov, because of the way he throws, the way that he's able to hit fighters, like when he fought Zach Pawanga, he hit him not in a, it, it was like a, a um, what is it? Not a natural like right hand. It was like a looping right or like a shovel, you know, that type of thing. So I think that awkwardness, the way he throws, the way he plants, the way he moves, causes Span some issues. And I think Guskov gets a first round knockout. Now, can Span knock him out? Sure. Sure. He can at least hurt him and then submit him for sure. But I think that awkward style, he's able to catch Spam as he's coming in because he keeps his hands down. He moves a lot. And I just think Guskov gets the job done. And probably in the first round. These guys are going to go at it. They're going to go at it. So next we have uh, Nicholas Ma uh, Matthias Nikolai versus Alex Perez. was supposed to be Manal Cop. So we'll see about that. Matthias Nikolai, 19-3. and 19-3-1. and 4-1 and one in his last five fights. Obviously losing to Brandon Royval. In the first round, I believe, with a knee. 31 years old, 5'6", with a 66-inch reach. Fighting Alex Perez, who's 24-8, and 2-3 and three in his last five fights. Losing to Mohamed Makayev, where people thought Alex Perez beat Makayev. He absolutely did not. Now, maybe if he was more active, sure, could have. Had positions, but he wasn't. He allowed Makayev to get uh, dominant positions. Plus 145 underdog, 32 years old, 5'6", with a 65 and a half inch reach. Half inch reach advantage for Nikolai. So I suspect Matthias Nikolai, because Manel Kopp is a much harder puncher than Alex Perez, Nikolai, his game plan doesn't really change. You know, honestly. Perez, good wrestler, for sure. Had a lot of bad luck in the UFC. I don't know how he's still number 11. He's not a great fighter. Now, he has wins against some good fighters, against Jordan Espinoza. Not great woman beater. Um, Juicy Air for Amiga did beat him by leg kicks, who's a veteran but not been great in the UFC. Losing to Davidson Figueredo got destroyed by him. Guillotine choke. Uh, lost to Alexander Pertoja, who again wasn't even on fight, and then lost to Makayev, where he had moments, but he didn't do enough to win it. So I like Nikolai. I, I think Perez really can make this fight a dog fight if he can get in close, mix in his wrestling. He's going to be strong. Uh, but I think Nikolai, uh, having his, uh, he has 10 finishes out of the 19 wins, has three, four, four finishes in the first round, has been uh, finished three times in his, the first round, never been submitted. But he also has uh, four in the second, four finishes in the second round, and two finishes in the third round round now has lost two split or majority decisions i think this fight goes to the scorecards but i think nikolai's activity it's going to be the activity against the pressure and the wrestling of perez the control from perez expect perez probably to come out and try to make a little bit more of a statement if he gets dominant positions expect him to go for more things have some more output but i think the uh sniping ability of nikolai might cause some issues for Perez. He does have the more finishing potential of than Perez. Again, he has 10 finishes. Again, Perez has 11 first round finishes. The issue is he also has five first round losses. Now, he has lost two unanimous decisions. Never split, nothing like that. 
has won one split, but he's been finished three times in the UFC. Three. Makayev didn't finish him. Pantoja finished him. Davison Figueredo finished him. And Joseph Benavides destroyed him twice in that fight. Twice. Mark, uh, Mark De La Rosa, not a great fighter. Jordan es- Espinoza, not great. Formiga is, is okay. 23-70, and 24-8 and eight, um, since leaving, leaving the UFC. But again, not great. Every time he steps up in competition, you know, like champion material, Figueredo. Pantoja, champion. He loses. Now, Joseph Benavidez, champion material, loses. Is Matias Nikolai championship material? The biggest question is, is does his chin hold up in this matchup? I, I think it does. I think Perez, you know, does have some first round finishing ability, but I'm pretty sure we've only seen him finish. Well, he finished Formiga with leg kicks in the first, which I don't think that's what he's going to do. He did finish Jose Torres, who's, again, not great. 12-2-1. Not great, like I said. I like Matthias Nikolai in this one. I think he gets the job done. I think he looks pretty damn good doing it. And I like Matthias Nikolai. As always, guys, subscribe, like, comment. Let me know you're picking. Let's talk about it. Peace.